to redemption is one that we will walk for the rest of our lives and it is the exact reason why we fall in love with characters on the big screen. From Kate and Twister who had to watch her entire team die because of an experiment that she wanted to pursue, to Lily who has to face the idea that she is going to deal with the same scenario that her mother did in It Ends With Us, to Bodhi in Fire Country who has to face the idea that not only did he lose his sister, but he lost a great deal of his best years to being trapped by a system that wasn't meant for him. It is redemption that we are looking for. It is redemption that is the greatest stories of our time. It is a trial of survival that we care to see and not only surviving, but overcoming and becoming the greatest version of ourselves. Today I want to talk about a few things that I've learned about redemption from my own story and from watching the stories on the big screen of these people who have decided to live a better life because at the end of the day, we have no other choice. One of the biggest things that I've learned this year is that redemption means that you have to accept and move on. And to do so, it is not to accept that what they did was correct or that it was okay, but to accept that I can't change it. And no matter how much time I spend looking at it and wanting it to be different, it can't be. And that the idea of acceptance means that we are accepting that not only did what happened happen, but that it happened for us and not to us. And that concept is almost harder to accept than the idea of acceptance itself. Because to believe that those difficult things, those hard things didn't just happen to you, but they happen for your greater self is something that once you get to, you understand, but before then, you are screaming and angry at the entire world. And for many months of this year, I was. I was mad at everyone who decided to leave me and who threw me out just as the company I worked for did. And I had to face that on my own and I had to realize that it is not fair what they did. And it's not okay. And that there is an anger at myself there because how could I have not seen it? And when you realize that you did see warning signs, that there was insights to you that this could happen, it makes it easier to process because you did know. And there was a part of you that believed that that wasn't true, but that is the voice that you have to listen to. The voice that's telling you, hey, you need to pay attention to this. This is information that you can't unsee. You have to accept it and you have to look at it. And that is exactly what all of the characters in those movies and shows did. They had to realize that other people have done things to me, but I now need to take acceptance and responsibility that I choose what happens next and that nobody else gets that over me unless I allow them to have that power. And when you are in a state of betrayal, of hurt, of deep grief, you feel like you have no power and acceptance gives you your power back and that you can respond and therefore take responsibility, meaning your power is yours and that you can take it back. And that's what I had to do. I had to realize that there was no amount of crying or wishing or wanting that would change the outcome of what happened, that I had to figure out what was going to happen next, that I had to apply to other jobs, that I had to seek out people who wanted to listen to me and when they didn't I had to walk away and that was difficult because it had me question what I thought about myself and my entire identity. I was so infused with a job that at the end took so much from me but I have to look at it as it happened for me and I'm no longer in the place that I lived in every way that that is possible to be true. I no longer live in the same state. I no longer have the same friends. I no longer have the same job. And it doesn't mean that you have to do a sweep of your life, but it means that you have to accept that what was working then is no longer working now and that you have to move on because it is your story that needs to continue. And their part in that story has ended and that there is a grief that comes with it. And that the reason why you're so upset all the time is because a version of you is ending. And when something dies, it isn't pretty. It fights to stay alive. And that was what all of the wailing and the crying and the deceit was. 
It was an end to a version of myself that can no longer continue, that wasn't strong enough to step into this next chapter, that what worked before was no longer going to work into tomorrow. And that was a very deep belief that I had to accept that this is what it was and now I get to move on into my next chapter and it's going to happen regardless. I couldn't go back to those people, I couldn't go back to that job and I had to figure it out. So it was either be stuck in this place forever and let everybody have this control over me or it was take my power back and move forward and I decided to take my power back. The next thing I realized was that though we may believe it, our past is not written in stone and that it is as just as dynamic as we are and that when we are in different moods and that we are in different states of happiness or joy or deep sadness, we are accessing different parts of our history and that we are rewriting it every single time that we do. And that being obsessed with what happened before meant that I couldn't live in the right now and that every time I thought of a memory, I was changing it because I was in a different mood, I had a different perspective, I had changed and therefore thinking of that memory changed it as well. When I'm super happy and super excited, I will think back on to other times in my life that I was excited to go get an ice cream or to hang out and laugh with friends. But when I'm in a state of deep despair or sadness or hurt, I go back to other times where I felt that way. And depending on my mood is depending on how I reach into that history. So though we believe that our history is written and sealed, it's really not. Because if I can access different memories at different times and change them every time, then my past is just as alive. And if I can go back into the past and spend so much time on it, I can also do that for my future. And spending time with what I hope to happen next is something that I can only do and that I have to choose to spend my time doing. And <clears throat> once I realized that a certain emotion could trigger all these memories and I could be stuck in the same mood, in the same position for hours, crying and wishing and wondering and questioning, and those are all the stages of grief. And that at some point you reach acceptance and that is the fifth stage and that all of the other stages you go back and forth over and over again and that once you do reach acceptance you may slip into the other ones but not as often and when you do think of it you'll have a sort of removed feeling about it and that's really what happens to me now is like I'll think about it but it's almost as if I'm remembering a dream that happened once and that's really what our memories are. It's like a dream that happened to someone else that you're trying to be explained to. And if you think about it, you really are in that same exact position because when you think of a memory, it's something that isn't happening to who you are right now. It's something to happen to a different version of you that you no longer understand. And you cannot judge the person that you were then either. If you have outmatured or outgrown certain behaviors or certain things and you look back and you're like, man, I should have known better back then, don't do that. That is overstepping this idea of acceptance and you are trying to change a past in a way that it can't be changed. You can't go back in time and share that knowledge with that person then. But it's a great thing that you can look back and be like, you know what? Like, I actually don't like any of the things that I did back then you've grown and you've changed and that you have been able to become better for it. And that the next time you face something like that, it won't be from the same place. It will be from a new place of understanding. And that is really what you have to get to is to realize it doesn't matter what happened before. And it doesn't matter that I didn't know better then. I know better now. And the more time I spend hung up on why didn't they text me back? Why did they never see me again? Why did they do what they did? It just keeps me stuck in a past that isn't even mine anymore. I am not the person I was at the start of this year. I'm not the person I was 10 years ago. And I'm not the per same person I was two hours ago. We change every single moment. And it is up to us to rewrite the past, to create a, the same past, or to drop that all together and to say, you know what, I can make better decisions. And that if I define myself by my past, everyone else will too. 
But if I choose to move on and to behave differently, to approach new scenarios and to say, this is how I'm doing it now, or to approach the same scenarios that you always have and have a different behavior, even if it's small, it is showing you that you can do it. And when you look back in the past and you tell yourself, man, I wish I did this or I did that, you are showing yourself that you can grow and that you can change because you're looking back and saying, this could have been different. And it can be different. It can be different right now. And it can be different because you decide that it needs to be because no one else can do it for you. You have to say, I am moving on and no one else gets to stop me any longer. And the third thing that I learned is that no matter where you go, there you are. So you better get real good with the person in the mirror and to figure out that I am not the enemy. I am not trying to hurt me and that my behavior has to reflect how I feel about myself. And if it's not a great behavior that's happening, it's because my relationship with myself has been damaged and that I have put myself on the back burner, that I've put myself in the corner and ignored all those needs. And I have to be the first person to say you matter and those decisions that you're making are a reflection of that. The only reason you're around these people who betrayed you was because you had to first betray yourself to be around them. Think about it. If somebody hurt you at a deep level, they there was probably something that you had to betray of yourself for you to be there. And that is difficult to accept that like, yeah, being around that person, I always felt bad. There was always this low grade anxiety. And then you have to forgive yourself for being like, why am I missing somebody who never made me feel good, who I was always upset about? And you got to that point where you can look back and you can say, you know what, like, this isn't what I want. This isn't for me. And that is what matters more than any other thing that you can conclude because you get to choose what happens next. You get to decide where your attention and your time and your desire goes. Where are you spending your entire life on? And where your attention goes is where everything will grow from. If you are spending all your time thinking about the past and all the people that hurt you, you continue to relive out that story and have more people who hurt you. And if you do feel like, man, why do I keep running into the same person? Which is exactly how I have felt this entire year. I'm like, how do I keep meeting people who disappoint me and hurt me over and over again? And I realized that it was the approach. It was, I believe that I needed to trust this person, but the trust was never in them. The trust was in me that had to happen. That if this job let me go, I if this new job let me go, if this new friend betrayed me, if somebody close to me did hurt me, the trust wasn't that they wouldn't do that. The trust was that I could get over it, that I could move on and say, you know what? This sucks that I have to see this as the reality right now. But the truth is that it's not their job to show up for you in any certain way. And yes, you do want to find the people who will. Now that you know that this is how they act, stop giving them as much time and presence and acceptance into your life. That acceptance and forgiveness is only for you because you have to live with yourself. Everybody else needs to behave better towards you to be in your life. And therefore, you have to behave better towards you too. That all of these people are hurting you, but you're hurting yourself if you're constantly using your past against you. If you're looking back and hurting yourself by thinking of all the things that happened to you or that you did or didn't do, it doesn't matter. The past is in the past and we can relive it and go back to it, but it doesn't make us better unless we realize that we can't change it, that we can learn from it and we can move on from it. That's the only thing that you really can do from your past is to decide that this is no longer going to be my story. And at the end of the day, when you're forced to make a choice, Choose the one that makes you feel the most free. Choose freedom whenever you can. If going on that trip with that person is to make them feel better, but you are going to suffer financially, even if it's not that drastic and you're going to be annoyed and you're going to feel so upset at the end of it and you're just going to talk about it all the time, don't go. Don't do anything that could bring you back to this place of being hurt like you were. And yes, I did say the road to redemption is one that we will walk on forever. And that redemption 
is moving you forward. Don't have to go through the same redemption story over and over again. Oh, I was with this bad person and he hurt me and this. You don't have to go through the same story over and over again. There will be other things that you will have to overcome and get through. And let those be new stories every time. You know what it's like to be with this person. You know what it's like to be around those people. You don't need any more information on their behavior. It's not going to change. The only person's behavior that you can change is your own. Don't try to change that guy or that job or that person or whoever. They don't matter. It is only your decisions that matter because it is only those decisions that will create your life. Other people can make decisions that affect your life, but ultimately it is how you react to them that matters more. And that redemption story is one that is yours and yours alone. Bodhi had to get up and decide not to do any more drugs and to stand up for himself and to go into those fires and to save those people, to show himself and the world that he was better than what the world had labeled him as. Lily had to stand up for herself and take control over her life and decide to get a divorce and to move on and to say, you know what? It ends with Kate had to do the same thing. She had to go into the eye of the storm and decide that it was her project that she was going to come see, that she was going to bring to life. And though she couldn't save those people that she loved, she was going to save this town. It is our decision. It is our redemption. And it needs to stop the blame on everyone else. You can take responsibility, but you don't have to stay there for the rest of your life. You can move on and you can decide to say, it ends here, it ends now, and those people no longer get access. But you have to do it. You have to put in that work and you have to say, enough is enough and I'm moving on. This is your story of redemption. You can do it. The greatest people, the greatest hero are the ones that we look up to because they had a redemption story. They got hurt, they fell, but they didn't stay there. And that is why they matter and why we look up to them. You don't have to save the world, but you have to save yourself in this story. There's a big, beautiful world out there waiting for us to take control of our lives and to add to the narrative as best as we can. What did you think of those movies? Did you watch Fire Country or Twisters or It Ends With Us? There is a lot of controversy around some of them and it is mostly the stories that matter. So let me know what you think. What is your story of redemption? We'll keep talking about this. Sorry I was away for a few weeks. I will eventually talk about it, but I'm in a better place. I'm trying to move on and the story doesn't end here, but the story of victimization ends here and it ends with us. I'll see you soon. Hope you have an amazing week. Mm -hmm.